What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another twin motion tutorial for you. So in the last video we talked about how to edit and paint landscapes inside the twin motion. Today we're going to talk about how to place plants and other objects like that using twin motions placement tools. I will link to my entire getting started in twin motion playlist in the notes down below if you're looking for more information. But let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so to start off, this is a house that I've downloaded from the SketchUp 3D warehouse and imported into twin motion. I've replaced a couple textures, but generally I've kind of left it alone because really the purpose of this video isn't to talk about this house as much as it is to talk about how to add plants and things like that. So if you want to download this and follow it along, um, follow along with me, you can download it. Um, it's called the LA House by SZ Kristoff. I've used it in uh, tutorials before. Um, I just kind of like the look of it. So if you want to download that and follow along, you can. So we've just gone to import and imported that SketchUp model into Twin Motion. The other thing that I've done is I've come in here and I've done some uh, landscape work around it. So I've adjusted the landscape so that it kind of lines up with what's uh, what's going on in this building. So just enough that I've kind of got some hills and some other things like that. But um, we've talked about how to do this in a previous video. Now what I want to do is I want to talk about how to add plants to this location. Because what we want to do is right now you've got this big kind of giant landscape plane. And uh, I will link to that video as well. But we've got this big kind of landscape plane around here. But it feels really open and empty because there's no trees or vegetation or anything like that. And so what I want to do is I want to show you how to come in here and start adding plants and trees and other things into Twin Motion. So there's a couple different ways you can do this. So the first way you can do this, and I'm just going to speed up my camera motion a little bit. Um, the first way that you can do this is let's say for example that you had the front side of this house right here. And you wanted to just quickly add a couple trees. So nothing complicated or anything like that. The easiest way to add plants in Twin Motion is going to be to just come over into this uh, left hand menu and click the drop down and uh, you're going to go inside your vegetation and landscape and click on trees. And so when you click on trees what you can do is you can come in here you can drag different trees in. So you can find something in this list and just drag it in just like this. So really easy, really quick. Um, if you just had like a couple trees, something like this, you could drag those over. The other thing you could do is you could place one and then let's say you wanted a copy of that one, you could just hold the shift key and make a copy over here. I will do a more in-depth video about that. Um, and we're just gonna click, we're gonna leave the number at one and we're gonna click okay. And I'm just gonna kind of rotate this and probably we're going to scale it down just a bit, whoops. So we're going to scale it just a little bit, just so the tree isn't exactly the same size as the one to the left of it. But you can see how dragging that in is really easy. The nice thing about that as well is that's going to, those two trees are going to show up inside of your, uh, inside of your outliner over here or your organization structure. So you can find them, you can select them really easily. You can turn them on and off really easily. So, um, that's the nice thing about these is they're going to show in here as individual objects. But a lot of the time, what you want to do is you want to place a lot more than just two trees. Um, and coming, coming in here and let's say you wanted to cover this this whole hillside over here with trees, that would be very time consuming doing it the way I just showed you. But luckily for us, there's a tool contained inside of Twin Motion, um, which is a vegetation tool that makes this a lot easier. So you can find the vegetation tool by clicking on this little leaf. Uh, the little nature leaf down here and then clicking on the button for vegetation and you may have come into this window before but you can see how what this does is this gives you a little box over here that has a number of different plants in it and then a couple different tools and we're going to talk about what those tools are going to do for us. All right, and so the simplest way to look at this is these tools down here, or this set of tools is in here um, in order to help you mass place different objects inside of your model. So you can see how as I adjust the diameter right here, this gives me a little, uh, a little dome that shows up inside of my model. And so let's select something like our grass. And so right now, if we were to select our grass and we need to make sure that our density is up a little bit, we'll talk about that in a second, and also our diameter. But if I click inside of this model, you can see how what this does is this actually scatters grass 
into this model. So if I zoom into this, there's now grass geometry in here based on the fact that I had this selected. And so this is going to act a little bit different than if we were to drag the grass in manually. So you might have noticed if you go into your vegetation and landscape and go to grass, if you drag a piece of grass in, it's just going to add this one little grass piece right here. And you're going to notice that this is actually going to show up in your outliner over here. However, you can see how when we used our dome, over here, um, our grass got placed in here, but it doesn't show up in the outliner. So these aren't placed in here as individual items that you can edit, like if you were to drag that in here from your library over on the left hand side. So it's going to act a little bit different. But what this means is this means that you can adjust the size and location of where this is going to be placed. And let's go ahead and pick a grass that's going to contrast a little bit more. with the background, maybe this one. So if we were to go into our vegetation settings and drag this other grass in here, so let's go ahead and we'll use maybe the grass six and place that. You can see how I could select that and click in here and this would actually place this grass in here based on this location that you click on while you have this tool selected. So that's an easy way to scatter things inside of your model. And the other thing I want to point out is if you don't like this, like if you wanted to remove this grass number six, you could come in here and you could select this grass number six and you could click on this erase button and you could erase that grass back out if you wanted to. So um, this isn't permanent. You can actually use this tool to remove anything that you place in here. And so let's go ahead and use this to place grass all the way along the front side right here. So we're just going to select this grass one. Um, that one's kind of low impact. So we'll go ahead and stick with that for right now. But I'm just going to come in here and I'm just going to use this to place grass inside of this dome. So you can see how pretty much everywhere where we're inside of this dome, we're getting grass placed in here because we have our density placed set to 100%. Well, now what I want to do is I want to change my density settings and add poppies inside of this grass material. So right now, if we leave our settings as is, and I'm going to go ahead and bring this down just a little bit, just because this is a really big diameter. But let's say that we had this uh, 10 meter circle in here and we had our density set to 100% and we clicked on the poppies. Well, if I was to click in here and add the poppies at 100%, you can see how this adds a lot of poppies inside of this location where we have this selected. I don't necessarily want that many poppies in here. I just want them in here to add kind of a different look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase the ones that I just placed back out. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go back into paint mode. We're going to drag the density down to something like 25% and we're going to try this again. So now if I click in here, you can see how I get a lot less poppies inside of this uh, sphere than I did before. Um, because we turned our density down, that means it's not placing as many of those objects. So if you just wanted like a little bit here and there, you could come in here and you could set this to something like 5%. And then you can see how now, that just kind of drops a few poppies in here and gives us a little bit of interest um, without kind of overwhelming us with the number of poppies that are placed in here. So you can see how you can use this to quickly add this kind of definition in here using grass and plants, but you can also use this tool to add things like trees. So let's say, for example, I wanted this house to be sitting kind of in a forest. So let's say I wanted a bunch of trees on this hill over here. Well, what we would do is we would go into our landscape or our vegetation and landscape settings, and we would find some trees that we want to place in here. So in this case, I would probably drag in like some of these American holly trees, maybe. Maybe, um, maybe not the Douglas firs at this point, but maybe some of the eastern cedars. I'm, I'm just kind of picking trees that I like the look of that aren't necessarily too, too huge. But I'm going to select um, kind of a collection of trees that I like. And what we're going to be able to do is we're actually going to be able to do a shift click and we're going to be able to select all of these different trees. And so when we select all of these different trees, what this is going to allow us to do is this is going to allow us to randomly place instances of these trees wherever our, uh, wherever our brush goes. And so I want to go ahead and I want to bring this diameter of this brush up to maybe like 25 meters or something like that. So you can see how that got larger. But if I single click on this hill, you can see what that's going to do is that's going to come in here and that's going to randomly place trees based on where my brush is. And so when I place these trees in here, 
not only can you single click, you could also click and drag. So you can see how when I click and drag, what this is doing is this is really kind of spreading those trees in here wherever my brush goes. So this allows you to quickly add all of these different trees. And one thing I don't necessarily like about this is this is pretty dense here on the backside. So I might consider dragging this down to maybe like 70% or something like that. You can see I'm getting a few less trees when I do that, but I can use this to really quickly place a bunch of trees trees inside of my renderings without having to come in and add those manually or anything like that. And so one thing that's kind of bothering me about this right now is all of these Alaska cedar trees are just kind of overwhelming. Like they're super huge and uh, they, they just kind of don't fit with the rest of the kinds of trees that I wanted in here. So let's say I wanted to go in here and just delete out the Alaska cedars. So what I could do is I could click on this erase button and then I could select the Alaska cedar and then I could come in here and click and drag and you can see how I can actually move just the Alaska cedar trees from what's been placed in here. So you can see how I can remove all of those without removing the other trees that are contained inside of uh, inside of this kind of scattered location in here. So you could come in here and you could adjust this so that you've only deleted out one kind of trees and not the others. And then we may want to come back in here and place... And so I'm just going to come back in here and add a few more trees to kind of fill in the gaps that were left um, when uh, when I erased out those Alaska cedars. But you can see how adding a forest in gets really easy using this tool. And so I could also come in here manually and let's say, for example, that I wanted to fill in a couple of these spaces, I could go ahead and I could select these just directly off of this and then I could just drag them in really quickly and I could use the shift and drag function in order to place a few extras to kind of fill in the holes. So if you do have a couple holes or something like that that start showing up in here, um, you could come in here and you could kind of fill those in manually just by doing a shift and drag just like this. So in addition to being able to place grass and flowers and trees, you could also use this to scatter rocks and other things like that. So um, there's a lot of different things you can do with this tool. You can see how this allows you to add different plants and other things into your rendering without having to manually come in and figure out exactly what a four needs to look like or something like that and then you could come in here and you could just uh, create your final render which I think I'm gonna do off screen and uh, we'll kind of go from there so that's kind of a quick overview of the landscape placement tools inside of twin motion leave a comment below let me know did I kind of cover what you wanted me to cover is there something else you'd like me to cover with this I just love having that conversation with you guys if you like this video please remember to click that like button down below if you're new around here remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week as always thank you so much for taking the time to watch this I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video thanks guys